Hey guys, welcome back to the prep series for the Olympia. We're currently 24 weeks out and slowly but surely we are going to get there. And these past few weeks, we're going to run through them, give you an update on training, nutrition, how everything's going for me. Then also at the very end, I'll, I'll run you guys through one of my, my new pull sessions that I'm running right now. So currently, I am right around 240 and not a lot has changed body weight wise. Uh, I started prepping where I was like, when it was initially, the Olympia was supposed to be in September. And I was 20 weeks out, I started dieting, like, all right, well, the Olympia's getting pushed back, we don't know when, whatever, we'll just do a mini cut, I'll bring my weight down to like 235-ish, and then maintain till true prep starts for Olympia. And the past 10 weeks have been challenging to get my body weight to change. And we've been, uh, you know, Vu and I, we've been like slowly doing some manipulations, trying a few different things, just um, did some calorie cycling, um, did like six days of low days, two days of high days. We did four days of low days, one high day, rotate it like that. And it, it still came down like calories just weren't low enough. And, and I was recomping a little bit and we've seen that. So when I, when I do even look at my pictures now, it's definitely a better quality 240. Um, have really good roundness to everything and conditioning's good. And, and like looking back to last year, that 240, it's a lot different 240. Uh, I'm a lot sharper and leaner now and, and rounder. So I just have more muscle. And so it was a productive off season, which is cool to see. And when, but they also the other fact to that is that it's going to take a lot more to get down and it's going to be a slower weight of fat loss too. The less body fat you have, just the slower rate you can go at. So this, these past few weeks I just really haven't been able to change much because it takes a lot to push me to get down and we were really holding back on doing so just because I wasn't into in a true contest prep. So to really like go all in on cardio and start sacrificing gym performance and really pull food down, we didn't want to have this prep turn into like this 35 plus week long prep. So it's just been a, a moderate, uh, slight deficit and, and more of this recomping that's been occurring. So the past three weeks now, uh, the, the diet changes that were made were to decrease carbohydrates to 225 grams, protein still around 300 and fats around 40, 40 grams of fat on my training days. Then on my off days, uh, carbs are 50 grams. I know it's crazy, like do your 240 and 50 grams of carbs, but uh, my, my protein stays the same, 300 grams of, of protein and 75 grams of fat. So on those off days, I'll do five meals. So I'll keep my protein portions a little bit higher. It's like eight ounces a meal. Um, I will fast a little bit in the morning to, to push off those meals. And then, and I'm, I'm actually hunger is actually really not bad because the fats are so high on that day. And then on the training days, I'll do six meals and keep, keep fats lower and put carbs mainly around, around training. So that change along with bumping my cardio from 20 minutes up to 35 minutes a day just barely move the dial a little bit on body weight. I still kind of, I'll, I'll just, I just adapt. And I've also had a lot more computer work that I've been doing. So it just, it just hasn't panned out. So we just know like when I go, do go into prep, we're gonna have to really punch the gas down and get me moving a lot, get my steps up, do more walking to, to really start to bring body fat down. Another issue that happened was during this same calorie shift and bumping cardio, I started a new training block. And I've been doing push pull legs off day, push pull off day, and then repeat that split. So the frequency is fairly high. And I started pushing a few exercises up to three sets. And this was like the beginning of the training block that I did. And that volume level just annihilated me. Like by the second week, I was feeling really, really fatigued. It was weighing on me heavy. And getting into the third week was even worse. I was feeling like motivation was lower, sleep was poor, drive to train was just not there. Um, everything felt pretty achy. So I just started off way too high in volume and going into this calorie deficit. And additionally, my mental stress has been very high because I've really been pushing on uh, client work and also making a lot of educational content and reading through research studies. So that total summation of stress is, is, you call it your allosteric load. So it's like your total stressors. And I've talked about this elsewhere, but basically if you think of your, a, a bucket of stressors, and you can only put so much in your bucket before it like overspills. 
and you have all these fatigue symptoms that build in. So and everything that you occur in environment adds up to the same stress. So whether it's poor sleep, um, you know, la- nutrition, a calorie deficit, uh, your boss yells at you, you know, you're mentally taxed from working so hard. And then you have whatever left you have for training or you try to train this much. Well, guess what? Your bucket air flows. You start having all the symptoms of high fatigue, lack of energy, lack of motivation, more susceptible for injury, illness. And that's kind of what I get into. I kind of going into like an overreaching, which would eventually lead into this overtraining space if I didn't do something about it. But that third week, I ended up uh, having a, a partial tear in my hamstring, which it was probably like a grade one strain. Um, I do have some bruising there. I was doing RDLs and I was into my third set and just with the fatigue, I wasn't quite as focused on my movement pattern. My hamstrings were already tight just because they weren't fully recovered. And that last rep, I just felt a little pop in my hamstring. Luckily, it wasn't bad. I've already gotten back to training hams, just doing leg curls, so no, no limitation there. No like visible deficit in any way. Um, but what I would say is like this is such a learning tool that you need to be able to manage your stressors and train with an appropriate volume and be able to constantly auto-regulate yourself and know when to pull back, when to push things up, and to manage stress. Recovery is huge. You can only train as much as you can recover from. And trying to train more and just not worrying about the recovery aspect is when you're going to run into a wall. And then you'll have to take time off. So that's what I had to do. I, I had to take a few days off of training. I did some deload sessions. And now I feel awesome. (laughs) I feel really good. Training's back to being really productive. Um, I changed my split, so I added in some extra rest days. And just doing a push-pull off, legs off, repeat. So everything gets hit five days. I have that off day surrounding legs, which is nice because after legs, I always feel really, really shot. And that's keeping me feeling recovered. I go into session, I can progress lifts, and I feel really good. Um, sleep's better now that I'm, I'm feeling that fatigue drop off. I'm also working on my sleep mechanics. So I've uh, realized that I sleep on my stomach like this and it like impinges my shoulder all night. And then I go and try to train. And I, since I've had this shoulder issue and impingement, I have all types of shoulder dysfunction and things aren't activating properly. And so I finally figured this out. So now I sleep in my, on my back in like a pillow fort. So I got like pillows under my arms and making sure I don't roll over. I think you can re-educate yourself to how you want to sleep. I can sleep on my side and put like a pillow under my rib cage so I'm not quite smashed onto that arm. And that makes a a big difference. It's, uh, I guess, big guy problems, (laughs) right? So so that's been a big benefit, um, just improving that and getting training feeling really, really good. And so finally, I actually feel... I feel great regarding everything. Um, so now moving forward, we'll be kind of cruising into the show. Um, the, the one addition that we've made these past week is just doing a big cheat meal once a week. Uh, we kind of did that when I was feeling really fatigued and kind of brought me back to life and um, the weight came up, but it trends back down. But I think just having food so low, it, it keeps me keeps me moving and being so far out, it's, it's a nice psychological break which I don't think there's a big like metabolic you know, change from just a cheat meal, but doing this year round, it's a nice to just have a break mentally and also just with being so isolated all the time, just with everything that's going on in the world, it's nice to get out and, and just have that. So anyway, that's where I'm currently at. Uh, we'll get into this pull session, I'll run you through it. So uh, what my general setup has been is I'm doing two pull rotations. My, this pull session has a little bit more emphasis on back uh, thickness. It's just more horizontal rowing is all it is. So I start with a horizontal row. And I, was, I start with the hammer strength DY low row. And I, I really enjoy the angle on this one. And I like a chest brace row, so I'm not trying to do any axle loading. Also I'm mindful that of my hamstring entry, so I don't want anything where I'm bent over and having to use my hamstring to, to load and brace with, with that. But that DY low row, it's nice. I like using a supinated grip and I can really tuck my elbows in tight and get good lat con- contraction and traps as well. I, I really think it just hits my entire back. So it's a good one to really start with. 
and the loading pattern on it, it pairs well, like resistance to strength curve. So you still like get some really good tension fully lengthened out for the lats and back. Um, so I start with that one, did a set of six to 10, then backed off in weight, hit a set of higher reps. And so this is gonna be my theme for back. It's gonna be two sets. It's what I've always done, I've always done well with. Uh, going up to three, like ah, there's moments I could do it, but at least at this time with food low, I just, I just can't. So I'll, typically for this session, we're gonna have four compound exercises, two sets each. So eight sets total for back. Uh, moving on from here, I, I went to a prime. Uh, it's like partially supinated uh, D handle pull down. I've used the prime actual grips before, but yeah, I can't strap into them and it kind of limits me. So I just switched to using D handles, and it gives me some like somewhat freedom and rotation of my wrist to get my elbow where I want it. So with these, I set the the width about shoulder width. So I can keep my wrist, elbow, and shoulder all perfectly in line and really focus on driving that elbow straight down to the hip and keeping it tucked in. So I'm trying to hit more lower lat focus within this movement, keeping a slight like 15 degree lean back in the torso and, and limiting sway in any way. Still going up to a set of six to 10 for a top set, then dropping back in weight and hitting something higher rep, 10 to 15 reps. From there, I'm gonna go back to a horizontal row. And the one I wanted to do was start moving up a little bit towards more upper back work. And uh, I, I did a chest braced dumbbell row today. And it was probably a 15 to 20 degree incline. And to where I get full range of motion, so I don't want this row where I'm up standing really tall, I'm just low, rowing really low, this small range of motion. So going that far over, I can really get my elbows really back far and get a good stretch. Um, and then the dumbbells, are like they almost come to a dead stop on the floor. And so uh, my form gets fairly standardized there. But the finish point of my elbows is about mid back. It's a little bit lower than my shoulders. So I'm definitely more focused on Terry's major and mid traps. And so, so hitting more of that upper back, still doing a, a top set of six to 10 reps then backing off to for 10 to 15 reps for my for my second set then we're going to go back to a vertical pull and i did a rack chin i thought about doing a pull up the loading pattern is, is so crappy because um, my back's already fatigued so to get all the way all the way up, it's just not happening. But with the rack chin, I can fairly standardize it, and and also I'm not swaying back and forth. So there's like this little bit more stability component to it, and I, I like having a, a pull down where I can have flare my elbows out some and get more of that terries and lower trap work in because my first two movements hit the lower lat really well. So kind of working lower lat and moving up the back. And for this one, I just, I don't put any weight. I, I stayed in a higher rep range. I hit uh, fi like 15 reps on that first set. Then I just, of course, stayed at body weight and reps dropped down to like 11 reps for, from just fatigue. And on this one, just work within your active range. So if your elbows are flared up, you're not gonna be able to go all the way down for most people to, to the chest. So that was, that finished up all the compound work. So that was eight sets of, of back total. So now getting into isolation work and for isolation work, it really is going to depend what you need to work on and what you put first. So what I'm doing is rotating my rear delt focus and lat focus on my isolation movements. So today, I, I do a, a pullover, standing pullover, and I, I use the prime bar again and D handles. I set them up right at shoulder width, so I, I can keep everything biomechanically just inlined, 
and I I, I uh, stay pretty far under the cable. So how it's set up is uh, when my arms are fully in, in shoulder flexion all the way up, that cable's at 90 degrees with my arm. So it's, it's the, the highest tension at that point. Because all your pull downs and pull ups and everything, the hardest point of it is when the muscle's short. And so to change the loading pattern and, and load the LinkedIn phase, um, I, I can set this cable system up to do so by having it really hard at the very, very end. And that's when that cable is set up to where it makes a 90 degree angle with the arm. And then as I pull down, that force line starts lining up more with my arms and it becomes easier as I go down. So the resistance profile and strength profile match really, really well doing it this way. And I'll do two sets here. So a set of 10 to 15, I'll just adjust the weight to stay within that rep range. Next movement, I go on to a rear delt focus and just do a pec deck fly. I'll do a set of 15 reps, uh, drop the weight so I can stay around 15 reps and work there. I think using a neutral grip uh, works really well for the rear delt because rear delt is involved in, in external rotation. So if you keep, like, I know a lot of guys will keep like palms down, pronated grip, um, but actually part of the rear delt function is external rotation. So if you keep your grip at a more a neutral, you can get a little bit more rear delt involved in it. And last movement of the day, some direct uh, trap work. And traps is one of those where you really don't need direct trap work. I mean, you might just grow enough just off doing deadlifts and rows and everything. Um, but so I just added one set of barbell shrugs and I set, I set the bar up to where I'm not having to like rack pull it from mid shin. You know, I'm basically, I could almost stop every rep on the pins, um, coming up controlled and just lowering it under control back down. You see guys just like pumping out traps, like training calves, like they're training, training traps, you know, you're just like bouncing up and down and uh, traps, and just like calves, they have like a good elastic component to them. You can handle a ton of weight. So just for, longevity and safety and, and just really loading the muscle well. Uh, bring it up, hold, hold them, and then control them back down. So I did one set of, I aimed with like 10 to 15 reps on a shrug. So just one set. Um, this was my first week into this training block. So I'm just kind of assessing how everything feels. I might add a set on, on traps, um, just depends how recovery goes. So. Um, I'm very cautiously <laughs> adding sets in, but my main progression form will definitely be in, in load and reps across this training block. But that wrapped up the session. It was solid. It connected well with all those movements. So happy with the how I placed them and the, and the exercise order. And just got to keep that execution uh, standardized the whole time and not let it shift around and try to make my mechanics easier just to move more weight because that's not the point of what we're doing here. But... Anyway, thanks guys for tuning in. I always appreciate y'all watch, watch my videos and the feedback you give. Uh, I look, look forward to doing these, keep doing these videos all the way into the Olympia. So if you have any questions or comments from you guys, leave them in the section below. I'll be happy to answer them. Till next time, we'll see you then.